In this video, I'm going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy A14 5G for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'll be walking you through how to use the new Samsung Galaxy A14 5G for beginners. And this is gonna be a full beginners walkthrough, so we'll be going over all the basics from how to navigate the phone, how to make calls and text messages, how to download apps, how to make the text larger so you can see everything on the screen, how to control the volume so you'll know how to put the phone on vibrate, silent, how to set up your email, how to take pictures, and we're gonna end with how to set up a password. Make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss any important information. If you find it helpful, make sure you hit that like button down below and leave me a comment at the end of the video and tell me if the video was helpful. Always love to hear from you guys. Um, right before I get started, I want to show you two things that I think you'll want to know about. So I'll be using this little pen uh, throughout the video. It's called a bamboo stylus, and it just helps with navigating the screen. Sometimes it's easier to use a stylus instead of a uh, your finger because it helps to cut down on fingerprint. So letting you know I'll be using that, and I'll have a link below in the description in case you'd like to get one for yourself. One more thing, when you purchased this phone, you probably noticed it did not come with a wall charger, which is super frustrating. However, I have a charger recommendation for you. This is the Anchor Nano Charger right here. It is a fast charging compatible charger. Um, it will work with the cable in the box. So wanted to recommend this in case you are using an old charger or um, you don't have one at all, I definitely recommend you get one of these and I'll have a link right below in the description. Make sure you buy a quality charger for your phone so that it does not stop working on you and it doesn't overheat your phone. This is why you have to invest in a quality charger and this is a quality charger. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. Starting with um, just a basic walkthrough of all the buttons and how to get into the phone. So on the left side of the phone, you'll notice that there is no physical buttons on this side, but there is a SIM tray and the SIM tray is where you'll um, put in the SIM card for your service. It's also where you would put in your micro SD card in case you had a memory card with your old phone. Now in the box of your phone, you'll have one of these, it's called a SIM tool and you just put it in and just give it a push and this will show you micro SD card goes here and your uh, network SIM card goes here. That's all you'll find on the left side of the phone. Now on the right side of the phone, you'll find the volume up and volume down button and you'll find your power button slash the fingerprint sensor. At the end of the video, when we set up that password, I'm gonna show you how to program the fingerprint sensor. So all you have to do is take your finger and touch the button and that will wake up the phone and unlock it. So anyway, that's gonna be your uh, power slash fingerprint sensor. At the top of the phone, you'll notice there is nothing. At the bottom of the phone, you will find your charging port. Now this phone uses what is called a type C charging type. So um, again, if you ever need to purchase a replacement cable, it is called a type C charging type. To the left here, you'll find your auxiliary port and that is where you will uh, plug in your headphones if you have some of the older headphone type, all right? Now, let's talk about how to unlock the phone. Now on the right side of the phone, we're gonna tap on that power button. You can also double tap on the home screen that will automatically wake up the phone if it is asleep. Now remember, uh, when the screen goes dark, the phone is not off, it's just asleep. So we can simply wake it up, again, tap power button or double tap on the home screen and that will wake up the phone. Now to get into the phone, we need to take, your, take our finger, put it on the screen and we're going to drag up. So again, finger on screen and just drag up the screen and that will take us into the phone. That is how you do what is called unlock the phone. Currently we don't have a password, so when we drag, it takes us right into the phone. 
if we had a password set up, when you try to drag your finger across the screen, it would then ask you to input your PIN or password. This is how you secure the phone. And again, we will cover that at the end of the video. So now that we're into the phone, I wanna show you a couple of important things you'll need to know. And then we will go through a walkthrough of the buttons and navigating the phone, okay? So the first thing I wanna show you is this. If you ever wanted to turn the phone off, what you'll wanna do is just hold down on the power button for about one second. That'll bring up this screen here and you'll have the option to trigger an emergency call, restart the phone or power off. So in case you'd like to turn the phone off, hold that power button, tap power, and that will actually turn the phone off completely. Now with smartphones, you don't really turn them off. They just go to sleep when we're not using them, and then we wanna use them, we simply wake it up and we just swipe through to get to the home screen. Okay, so now that we're on the home screen, let's talk about these three buttons at the bottom. These are the three most important buttons of the phone because they really control how you navigate through the menus and how you get back to the main screen. So this screen is called the home screen, and this is our home button in the center here. So if I go to any one of these little icons, now um, these icons, excuse me, are called apps. Think of it like a computer. Computers have programs, phones have applications, or apps for short. So you're gonna hear me use the term apps. I'm referring to these icons, programs for computers, applications or apps for phones. When I open up one of these applications, let's say I'd like to make a call, I would tap on the call button. It would take me to what is called the dialer so I can make that call. Now when I'm finished making the call, I can tap on this button in the center, the home button, and it will take me back to the home screen. That's all this button does. It just takes you right back to this screen here, which is the home screen. If I were to go to Google Chrome, which is the web browser, how you get on the internet, let's say I wanted to do a search to see what news is relevant today, and I'm scrolling through. If, I, if I'm finished and I'd like to go back to the home screen, same thing, tap the home button, it'll take us right back to our home screen. That's all this button does. Now on the left, you'll find what is called the Recent Apps button. Now this will show you the last apps that you have opened. So we just opened up Google Chrome, the web browser, and we opened up our dialer, our phone app to make a call. So notice they are still open. Why is that? Well, guess what? We went to the phone app and then we went right back home. We never actually closed the app, we just went back to the home screen. So that app will run in the background and I can verify that by tapping on the recent apps button here. Now if I want to actually close that app so it's no longer running, I'm simply going to swipe up just like this and that will close it. Same thing with your finger, swipe up and that will close the app. Now it's no longer running in the background. You want to avoid having too many apps running in the background because that will slow down the phone. Now I can also tap on this button here, close all, and it will close all the apps at one time. So that is all this button does. It shows you what is running and allows you to close out any app that you are finished using. Now, on the right here, you'll have what is called the back button. Our back button takes us back one step. Let me show you how it works. Now, I'm gonna go to the settings app. Now, to get there, I'm going to do what's called a swipe from the top of the screen. So take your finger, um, bring it to the top of the screen and just drag down. And in the upper right corner, you will find the settings wheel now this is a shortcut that will take you to the settings menu. Now, I'm in the settings and let's say I wanna go to themes. So I just went to themes. Now guess what? If I tapped themes by accident and I wanna go back 
one page or one step, I'm going to use my back button and just simply tap to take me back one step. Let's say I keep going and now I want to go to advanced features. And then I go to labs and let's just say I'm exploring because I just want to see what I can do with the phone and I end up in this random section of the settings called labs. Oh no, I want to go back. I didn't mean to tap that. I'm going to use my back button, go back one page. I can tap it again to go back another page. And now I'm on the main screen of the settings page. And guess what? If I hit the back button again, it's going to take me out of the settings and back to the home screen. So all you need to know is that button is going to take you back one step. Okay. So these are the three main buttons you will be using to navigate the phone. Now let's talk more about what I did a few minutes ago, which was drag down from the top to what is called the notification panel. Again, take your finger, start at the top of the screen and just drag down. And this will take us to, again, what is called the notification panel. You'll find two things in the notification panel. You'll find your switches. These are shortcuts to the most frequently used options in the settings. And at the bottom here, you'll find notifications. Guess what? If someone sends you a text message, you would see that message in this section. It will notify you that you have a message and show it in this section. If you have a missed call, you can see who called in this section. Same thing if you have a new email or if there's another app that you're using like Facebook and you have a new notification, they all will show up in this section. And you can simply, uh, when you see the pop-up for that notification, if you tap on it, it will take you right to that app so you can see more information. That's all that happens in this section. Now, the top of the screen, you have what are called your switches. Again, shortcuts to the most frequently used options in the settings. So for example, the first option here is your Wi-Fi option. If you'd like to connect to your home Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi at a friend's house or a coffee shop, you'll first need to make sure that this icon is lit up in blue. That's what tells you that your Wi-Fi is on. If I were to tap it and now it's gray, guess what? My Wi-Fi is turned off. Let's tap it again to turn it on. And it should automatically connect to wherever the last network you were connected to. However, what if you weren't connected to a network? It will bring up a list of all the available networks you can connect to, and then you can select which one you'd like to go to. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to take my finger and just put it right on the Wi-Fi icon for one second. It's going to take us right to the settings menu. And here it will show you a list of all the available Wi-Fi networks. Now I'm connected to this one, but these are all other networks that I am in range of that I can connect to. So if you are at home, you would look for your Wi-Fi network, tap on it, and then it would ask you to enter a password. You would type in the password down here and then hit done. And that would allow you to connect to that network. Okay. Now guess what? We're going to use our back button here to back out of this because we're now all done with Wi-Fi. Now let's swipe down from the top again. We have next our volume. This is our volume button here. This is how you control the sound on the phone. What you see right now, this is telling you that the phone uh, volume is up. If a call comes through, your phone is going to ring. If someone sends you a text, your phone will make a beep. If I tap on this icon here, guess what? Now there's a slash that's over the, the symbol and that's telling you that the phone is on vibrate. And if I tap it again, now it's gray and gray means it's off. So now my sound is totally off. If someone tries to call me, my phone is not going to vibrate and it's not going to ring. So this is good to know when you go to certain places, Hey, I should put my phone on vibrate or silent. 
I don't want it to make noise. But when you leave, you have to go back to your settings and make sure you tap that button again to make sure you turn your sound back on. To the right, you'll find your Bluetooth icon. And this is the icon you would use to connect to a Bluetooth device. For example, a Bluetooth speaker, Bluetooth headphones, Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth mouse. You'll need to make sure this is lit up in blue. Then you're gonna hold down on the icon. That's gonna bring up our list of available devices. And you would look for whatever it is you're trying to connect to. If you had Bluetooth headphones, guess what? You've made sure Bluetooth is on. You're in the right section. Now you need to put your Bluetooth device in the pairing mode. Look in your manual, it'll show you how to put it into the pairing mode. And then your device will show up on this list. You would tap on it and that would allow your phone to connect to that Bluetooth device. So I'm not gonna go over every single option up at the top here, but I just wanted to walk you through some of the most important options. Now, uh, all the way to the right here, you'll find your flashlight. Tapping on the flashlight will turn your phone's flash into a flashlight. Great for when you're in the dark or, you know, need a little extra light. Now, there is a little bit more to this section. For example, if I swipe down, this is the main view of the notification panel. If I swipe down again, it's gonna give me more shortcuts. I have a shortcut now to my hotspot using your phone to share the internet. Power saving mode for when your battery's low. Your GPS for when you need to look up directions. Quick share, nearby share, which allow you to share pictures and videos to people around you. And guess what? I can swipe over and I have a few more options. Do not disturb. You have a QR code scanner if you need to scan a QR code and an eye comfort shield setting and dark mode. So just to show you there's more shortcuts to the settings. And that is a quick rundown of the notification panel. In this section, I'll be going over how to make calls and how to answer the phone when someone is calling you. So let's start with when a call is coming through, how you answer the phone. I'm gonna initiate a call. Okay, so the call is coming through. I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna put it on the uh, green phone button and drag up. That is how you answer the phone. Now, if you wanna put the phone on speakerphone, obviously tap speaker. You've got mute, you have uh, the plus here if you'd like to add someone else to the call, and you have your keypad dialer here in case you're calling an automated system and you need to specifically uh, uh, enter a, a key command. When you're all finished with the call, tap the red button to end the call. Now the same thing goes if you, are, um, if you want to decline the call. So if a call is coming through and you don't want to answer it, you can obviously just not touch anything, but you can also take your finger, put it on the red button, and you're gonna put it on the button and then drag up, and that's going to decline the call. So it's gonna automatically go to voicemail and the person can leave you a message. Next, let's go over how to initiate a call. We're gonna tap on this green call button in the bottom left corner and I'm going to tap on the keypad button and I'm gonna enter a phone number starting with the area code 323-853-1212 and tap the green button to start the call. And let's put it on speaker here. The time and temperature is coming up. There we go. This. It'll connect, you can talk. When you're all done, you'll tap the red button to end the call. So just that easy you can initiate a call. Let's segue from making calls to sending text messages. To the left of the call button is gonna be your messages button. If you tap on that, this is the text message section. And if you'd like to send someone a message, you're gonna tap on the bubble in the bottom right corner and then you will uh, see a keyboard pop up 
and you can type in the person's name if they're already saved in your phone or you can uh, enter just the phone number. Now a quick shortcut, if you tap on this button here, this is your dialer or your keypad, it will switch it to make it easier for you to input just a phone number. Let's put that same number in and then we'll hit done. So now we've basically set it up so we're gonna text that number. Our keyboard has come up. We're now in the text message section at the bottom here and I can now enter a message. Hi there. And when I'm ready to send it, I can tap on the button here, which is the send button. Now here's a few more things you can do in terms of sending text messages. You have an emoji button here. This will bring up your uh, emojis. You can send someone a picture. For example, if someone says, you know, goodbye, you can send uh, a wave like this and hit the send button. And now you've just sent someone a wave emoji. If I tap on the button here, this will allow me to attach a picture to the email. So you'll have two options. You'll have a camera option, which is, hey, let's take a picture right now. I'm gonna just hold it up and tap on the white circle. That's gonna take a picture that I can attach immediately to the text message, or I can go to my gallery right here and look at what pictures are saved on the phone. Let's say I wanna send this picture, I'm gonna tap on it, tap on add, and now I've attached two pictures to this text message, and I'm gonna hit this button to send it. Now, that's not all. There's a few more things you can do as well. If you tap on the plus all the way to the left, you can look for a GIF if you'd like to send them one of those funny animated pictures. You can also send stickers. You can attach different types of files, not pictures, but maybe like a document. You can send your location in case you're trying to show someone how to find you. You can attach a contact or you can even schedule a message to be sent later by selecting here. You also have uh, two microphones on the screen. One is here and one is here. The, key, the microphone at the bottom here will allow you to say what you want your message to say and it will type it for you. It will dictate it. So watch this. Tap on the microphone. Let's hit skip. Tap while using. Agree. It's now going to make you press it again. Good morning, I hope you're feeling well today. And basically, it just typed out everything I said into the message, and all I have to do is hit the send button to send out that message. Now, this microphone is a different option. This is if you'd like to send someone a voice message, you can tap here and um, basically say a verbal message and have that sent to them. But you'll need to take your finger and hold down on the button. It will record as long as you're holding down on the button and then it will stop recording once you lift your finger like this. Good morning, I hope you're feeling well today. So it just created a three second voice message that I can now send in the message. So these are just a few of the things you can do um, in terms of text messages. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to download applications. If you'd like to play a game on your phone, if you'd like to order an Uber, if you'd like to um, check your Facebook, those are all considered apps and they're all downloaded in one place. So first I'm gonna show you how to get to your all the apps on the phone then I'm going to show you how to download new apps to the phone. So we're on the home screen. If we'd like to get to our app section, what we call the app drawer, we're going to swipe up on the home screen. This takes us to our app drawer. And here we'll see all the apps that are currently installed on the phone. You'll have a couple of folders at the very top. So your Google folder, which will have all the Google specific apps your Microsoft folder, 
Samsung folder and a T-Mobile folder because it's a T-Mobile phone. Okay. Now, if you'd like to download a new app, you need to go to what is called the Play Store, which is this icon right here. This is the store where you can download games and um, other apps, books, things of that nature. We're gonna tap on the green button to sign in. And what it's looking for is a Google account. You have to have a Google account or Gmail account in order to download apps. If you don't have one, no problem. You would tap on the create account button right here and it will walk you through a quick process for you to create your own Gmail on the spot. I already have a Gmail, so all I'm going to do is tap in the box and I'm going to enter my uh, Gmail address and the password, and then it will allow me to sign into the Play Store. Okay, so we have entered our account information and signed in, and it's just gonna ask us to accept a few uh, prompts, and then we'll be, then we will uh, move to the Play Store, which is where we can download uh, applications. Let's say you'd like to download a slot machine app because you like to play slot machines. You can go to the top of the screen where it says search for apps and games. And by tapping in the box, it will bring up your keyboard and then you can enter um, the type of game you want to download. I'm going to type in slots and hit the magnifying glass to do a search. It's going to give you a ton of options. Now, when you select one, you want to make sure this green button says install, not a price. If you see a number in that green box, it's telling you that this is not a free app. It's a paid app. A large percentage of the apps in this store are free. I always recommend find a free one first. If you can't find a quality free one, then purchase an app. So in this case, I, I see this app here. I can swipe through to look at the pictures to see if I like how the app looks. And if I like it and I wanna try it, I'm gonna tap on this green install button and it will begin to download to the phone. Now downloading generally is pretty quick. Most of the apps are not too big, so less than 30 seconds to a minute, the app should be downloaded. You will know the app is installed because once this ring fills up, you'll see a button here that will say open. That's how we'll know that the app was installed successfully. So it was just downloaded. Oh, they changed it. You say open, now it says play. So we would tap on this button and we would go right in to begin playing the app. Okay, now, one thing you'll notice, because I opened the app, I can't see my home button anywhere on the screen, but this arrow pointing up is trying to show us. All we have to do is swipe up and it will bring up our home keys, our home recent apps in our back button. So I can swipe up, tap the home button to get out of the app when I'm finished using it. Now, if I swipe up on the home screen, guess what? Swipe to my left, Here's the new app we just downloaded. This is where your apps will go once you download them to the phone. Now, let's go back to the Play Store. There's a few more things I'd like to show you. First, let's use our back button at the bottom of the screen to go back one page. So we're backing out of that app and we're gonna tap it again to get back to the main screen. There we go. So I just wanna show you how to navigate this store because there's a lot in here and maybe you don't know what you want to download, but you'd like to see what's available. So at the bottom, you'll find some tabs. If you're just looking for games, there's a game section. There's a, you know just general apps. There's other offers, and then there's books. And then within each of these tabs, you'll have some options at the top here. So recommendations for you, top charts, which means are the most popular apps right now, apps for kids, categories. You can go through and say, I'm looking specifically for a dating app. Well, there's a section that just has dating apps. So this is how you can navigate through. Now maybe you say, oh, I don't think I want any of these. I'm gonna tap the back button to back out of this. 
and keep looking through my list. Let's go to, oh, lifestyle apps. And then you can look through the apps that are here. So that's just a quick rundown of how you navigate the store. In the next section, we're gonna go over how to make the text size larger so you can read the words in the event that the text size is too small. We're gonna swipe down from the top of the screen, tap on our settings wheel in the upper right corner. We're now going to swipe up to display and then go to font, size, and style. And here, we're gonna do a couple of things. I can make the font bold, which will make it a little easier to read. And then I can begin dragging this bubble over to make the text larger. This will show you a preview of what things will look like as we keep moving, text is bigger. As we keep moving, text gets bigger. So only you will know what is the best size for you. So I would encourage you to, you know, move it over and then go back and see how that looks on the home screen. And if you think it's too big, you can always go back and move it down. And if it's too small, go back and move it up. But as you can see, Galaxy Store is a bit easier to read. Microsoft is easier to read now. As we go into our text messages, you'll see that the words are a lot bigger now. So these are just a few um, tweaks to help improve the experience. Now this might be too big. So you might wanna go back in and make this a little bit smaller. Again, that's up to you. Now guess what? We can use our recent apps buttons, button to do this. Tap here, tap, go, let's go back to font size and style and I can drag over one or two and say, let me make it a little bit smaller. And now I can use recent apps to jump back to messages to gauge how big or small things are. So keep going back and forth until you find a mix that works for you. Next, we're gonna go over how to set up your email on the phone. So this is relatively easy. You're gonna to go to the Google folder on the home screen. If you don't see this on your home screen, swipe up, go to the Google folder in the app drawer and tap on Gmail. Now, you might say to yourself, I don't have a Gmail. I have a Yahoo, I have an AOL, I have a different email type. So I can't use Gmail. Well, this is not correct. Um, this app will allow you to sign into other email types. Let me show you. So come to the upper right corner, tap on the little circle, and come down to add another account. And here you'll see all the supported types, Google, Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, Exchange, and Office 360. If you have any one of those types, you simply are gonna select the option and then it will let you enter your email address and your password to sign into that email account. However, what if you have an AOL or an spcglobal.net and you don't see those on the list? No problem. You're gonna tap on the Play Store. We're gonna go back here and we're going to, I'm gonna show you a little trick on how to find another app that will work with your specific email type. Okay, so let's come to the top of the screen where it says search for apps. Now, in the bottom left corner, you'll see a button. Tap there, tap on the at symbol, and then tap on the ABC in the corner, and you're gonna type in the ending of your email address. For example, if you have an AOL, you're gonna type A O L dot com and hit the magnifying glass to do a search. And guess what? It's now gonna recommend apps that will work with AOL email addresses. For example, the AOL app. I can tap on the green install button and, and download the AOL app and now I can use this app to check AOL emails. Now I'm gonna hit the back button again. Let's go back to search. What if you have an sbcglobal.net? Let's see what apps are compatible with that email type. sbcglobal.net. 
hit the magnifying glass to search. And here we go. These are five apps that will support an sbcglobal.net email address. Tap on the green install button and it will begin downloading that app to the phone. If we hit our home button and we swipe up and swipe to our left, here's the AOL app we just downloaded. I didn't mean to select it. And soon we will see the other email app we just downloaded to use with sbcglobal.net. So that is how you set up your email on the phone. In the next section, we'll be going over how to use the camera, how to take pictures, how to take videos. So our camera is going to be found in the bottom right corner. Tap on this red icon. And currently right now, we're set to take a picture. Our camera is on photo, which is telling us we're going to take a picture. We're going to tap the white button to snap the picture. If I want to take a video, I'm going to tap on video and tap the red button. Notice our white button is not a red button, which means record. And now I'm recording a video. You see? When you're all done, you can tap on this button here. If you'd like to take a picture while you're recording a video, tap the icon to the left, the camera icon, and then tap the square when you're ready to stop recording. If you'd like to see the video you just took, tap on the circle to the left of the red button here. And here is our video. I can always swipe over to look at the still pictures I took as well. And that's how you take a picture. If you don't like the picture, for example, I don't love this picture right here. I'm going to tap on the trash can at the bottom and it will move it to the trash. I'll now have 30 days to go back and recover that picture before it's permanently deleted. Now, if you'd like to later go look at those pictures and videos you took, you have to go to a different section. So we're going to swipe up on the home screen and we're going to go to the gallery app and the gallery is where all pictures and videos will be stored. If I go to the picture tab on the bottom left, We'll see these are the three pictures and videos we took today. They'll organize them by the date. If I go to albums, they'll organize the pictures by type. So these were screenshots. This is from the camera. And we have no favorites right now. So that is using the camera in a nutshell. Now in our last section of the video, I'll be covering how to set up a password and how to set up the fingerprint sensor so you can unlock the phone with your fingerprint. Now, first thing we're going to do is swipe down from the top of the screen. We're going to go to that settings wheel in the upper right corner. And I just turned on the flashlight by accident. Okay, so we're in the settings. We're going to go up to lock screen. Or actually, excuse me, first we're going to go to scroll down to lock screen and then where it says lock screen type, tap there and we're going to select what type of password we would like to set up for the phone. These are the different options here. We're currently on what is called a swipe and basically there's no password. You just, when you're on the lock screen, you just swipe. And that's how you unlock the phone. You have the option of setting up a pattern, which is a, uh, a pattern that someone has to enter to unlock the phone. You can set a four digit code or a high security password, which is a combination of letters and numbers. Um, I like the pen or pattern the best because it's usually the easiest to remember. Uh, let's go to pen and we're going to uh, think of a four digit number to make the password for the phone. So I'm just gonna do 0000. Definitely make yours harder than that. I'm just making this for the sake of the video. Next, we're gonna tap 0000, press next. And then you have this final option, which is asking when the phone is locked or when the phone is asleep, when it first wakes up, do you wanna hide any messages that are coming through the phone? What this basically means is 
If someone sends you a text message, if you don't want someone to be able to pick up your phone and read your messages, then you'll want to enable hide content because someone doesn't have to have your password to be able to read messages on your main screen when the phone is locked. So if you'd like to have that extra protection, just simply check that box and now on the lock screen, you'll have to put that pin code in before anyone can read the messages that are coming through the phone. Okay, so we're gonna hit done, agree, and now if I put the phone to sleep and wake it up again, if I try to swipe through, it's gonna ask me for a pin code now. And I'll have to enter the 0000, and that will allow me to unlock the phone. There's an additional thing you can set up, which is called a Samsung account. And this is uh, an additional uh, thing that you should definitely do. It's an account with Samsung that will um, serve as a backup if you ever forget that PIN code. Um, all you'll need to do is enter your phone number or email and create an account with Samsung. And you can have this tied to your Gmail account. So if you ever forget that PIN code, they can use your email to send you a temporary code and help give you access to your phone. So take a minute and definitely fill out the prompts on this screen here, just as a backup in the event you ever lose that pin code. Now, let's use our back button to back out of this. And now we're gonna tap on screen lock type again. And it's gonna ask us every time we go there to put our code in, no problem, done. So this is where we're gonna be able to set up either a fingerprint or our face as an unlocking method to get in the phone. I'm just gonna um, focus on the fingerprint for this section of the video, but if we tap on fingerprints, we can actually use our whatever finger you want to unlock the phone using that power button that we mentioned earlier. So I'm just gonna take my finger and begin tapping the button and it's going to learn my fingerprint so that I can actually just pick up the phone and touch the power button with my thumb and then I won't have to put in that code. So literally keep lifting your, your finger and putting it uh, down on the button so it can learn your fingerprint. And I always say try to hold the phone in the way you would normally hold it because that's, you know, you want it to learn your finger in the way you're gonna hold the phone. That'll make sure that it unlocks most of the time we're almost there. Again, just keep lifting and putting your finger down. Try to move the position slightly so it can read and just learn all of your finger. I also recommend you setting up multiple fingers because let's say one of your fingers has oil on it or grease, um, then you can use maybe a finger on your other hand to unlock the phone. So that's just one tip that I always recommend. We're just about there. We're at the finish line, there we go. So it'll automatically ask you at the end, do you want to add another fingerprint? And you would just tap add, and then you can switch hands and then use a finger on your other hand just to have a backup program. We're not gonna do it for the video, but I just wanna encourage you to do that. Let's hit done. And now, if I were to put the phone asleep, and if I tap on the power button, I can take my finger, so if I swipe up, it's gonna ask for the pin code. But if I now touch the power button with my thumb, which is programmed in the phone, it'll automatically unlock the phone just like that. This will also work if your phone is asleep and you touch the power button, even if the screen is off, it'll automatically wake up the phone and take you right into the phone. So that is how you set up the fingerprint sensor to make it easier to unlock the phone. We have come to the end of the video and I hope that you guys found this helpful. I tried to be very thorough and really cover all the important things a new user would need to know. If you found the video helpful, once again, please hit that like button down below and leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on the video. I always love to hear your feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. As we continue to make these videos, I wanna make sure I'm catering them to new users and just making it easier for you to learn how to use these new devices. Also, also make sure to check in the description below um, for a link to get this Anchor charger. Again, it's a great fast charger that's gonna help, uh, one, um, keep your phone charged all the time, 
and protect your phone. Again, you want to use quality chargers and make sure you don't use anything that is um, cheap or it could mess up your phone. Also, I'll have a link below for where you can get that stylus pen in case you'd like to use something like that to help navigate your screen and also keep your screen clean. You're gonna find some links to some other really helpful videos here. So check out this video and check out this video as well. It'll be just more helpful information in learning how to use the Samsung Galaxy A14. Thanks again for watching guys. Take care and as always, have a good one.